we're back building our Austin Healy Sprite. This is the second part of the video. And what I've done is, since the last section of the model, we had uh, been in our side view, and then we were out in our main perspective view, and we built this whole side panel, then extruded it using these drawings that we created in Photoshop. And as I'm in my side view, I notice that you know, I don't have a semicircle here, and I want to build it to be a little bit more accurate along that wheel well. Rather than trying to drive myself crazy trying to make these edges look perfect, I'm going to borrow some geometry. I just made a simple circle just using the Create Circle menu, so it's a base primitive, and that's what I have lined up over here. And It's right where I want it to be as far as the wheel well is concerned. I just want to make sure that uh, it's the right size. Actually, it's a little bit closer to the final shape of the tire, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste. This is something I like about having an image plane, is I can tuck something behind it and it's effectively gone. It's still accessible through my scene editor, but it's basically out of the way. So what I want to do is, once I have this lined up, just push it back just a little bit so it'll cause a slight indentation. I want to go ahead and go to my mirroring menu option and mirror it across to the other side. Then I'll select the main body and group so that when I click on each of these I should be able to extrude across actually join those edges and you can join multiple edges at the same time. Make sure I have all these selected Shift B. And if that was the way I wanted it, then I could choose to delete. You could delete this ahead of time, the other part of this circle that you're not going to be using. I just leave it there and then delete it later in the process. Now, if I were to go ahead and, and delete this, and then I realized, oh, hey, wow, there's a section that I didn't build. It's this one right here. That's not a problem. You could just grab the edge, extrude it, move it into place, and then I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit, and grab the points that are along the edge. You know, it's basically like a flower that's opened up. You just want to close it back down again. And in that way, we have our wheel well. And we'll use the same technique to build a wheel well on the back of the car. As we're working across the wheel well in the back of the car, we run into a slight problem. As we're coming around, the edges aren't lining up. We've got a few, we've got two edges on the inside here and just one edge on the outside. So we want those to line up as closely as possible. One way I could choose to solve this is go ahead and just cut this edge and then pull this across. But notice that's done something strange to the edge tension. It's actually pulled this edge in a way that's kind of undesirable. The other way that we could do this is just go across the top of the car and create a little bit more geometry. Now you want to make sure you don't create too much geometry when you're still, I'm still just trying to get the basic shape of my car. And uh, we don't want to create too many planes, too many polygons, and then end up having to delete later but I like to have the basic shape lined up and I like to have everything more or less be polygons or uh, four-sided polygons or three-sided polygons so that gives us basically the shape that we're looking for out of those wheel wells. It's looking nice. Mm, I didn't like what happened there. I think we might need to create a little bit more shape along that edge we can come back to that. At this stage you don't need to get too final on those. You can, you can define them a little bit more. We're going to move into the front of the car and develop the grill just a little bit more. So for the grill, to try and get this smiling shape that's so fun in the original car, I want to create a little bit more tension along this, this open hole that I've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and cut a couple of these edges. Connect that. 
And I know I'm going to want to create a loop for this. So let's see how far I can get. I'll just go ahead and cut the entire section. Now I probably create a couple polygons here that I'm not all that crazy about. But uh, at this stage, it's fairly easy to just go ahead and give yourself more to work with. That's basically the shape I'm looking for. Let me go to the side. And let's shift out a second. There we go. And now let's concentrate on... Okay, that's much better. It gives us a loop. Now we want to create the tires and placeholders for where the headlamp is going to be. And we had that extra piece from the tire. We're going to move back, move back into position. Just get right in front of it. Switch to our side view. Make sure it's lined up. And it's lined up pretty close. That's just about perfect. Move it into position. And what I like to do here is actually grab all the edges. Now you could do this with a cylinder. I choose to do it by just selecting all the edges. Personal preference. And then extruding. Extrude forward. Select both edges. I'm just going to select the whole loop. Make sure I'm in position. That view got slightly off. It did. Okay. Just trust our side view and our front view. You can always adjust the thickness of this tire later on. Because I still have those edges selected, I'm going to extrude again. I'm trying to get a better shape for a tire. I want it to be a little bit rounded bulb out a little bit and then come back in so we're going to shift to our side view want it to be just around at this point and then extrude again pull it inward I don't really feel the need for that to connect it really just is a placeholder for now just extrude it a little bit inward so we don't have any gaps where light accidentally leaks through. Okay. That looks pretty good as my placeholder. I want to move it in just a touch. So it's sitting underneath. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to call it tire place. And I do name all my objects like this so that when I pull it into another program, Strata or Maya, that I have all these named objects. And I'm not guessing at where to find everything. I'm going to go to Modify Mirror again, use Mirror Geometry. And now that it's mirrored, I could then cut and paste and just move another set of tires to the back. Again, this is grouped. So now we have basic tires as a placeholder. And what we can do is, again, we're going to borrow geometry to create a little bit more shape definition to these tires and we're going to create a second shape we're actually going to take just uh, some of these faces I'm just going to go ahead and select the entire loop I wanted to select the loop, there we go cut and paste once again, don't forget to mirror move this onto the inside modify, mirroring so it creates identical set on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and select my loop, extrude again. And this is creating the hubcap. Not sure what my hubcap shape is going to be right now. But I'm going to give it uh, enough definition. I can make changes further down the road. Zoom in a little bit more so we can see this a little bit better. 
you know, we select the loop, extrude, pull it out a little bit, extrude again, and I'm going to cap it using Control M to merge. This way, I've created enough geometry that if I want to make some changes down the road, it's not all that hard. If I want to have one section that's going to come out a little bit, it's not difficult. If I wanted to create more extrusions, it would be easy enough to. But I think that'll, that'll do for now. And I want to create the headlamps on top. For the headlamps, I'm also going to start with base geometry. Just a cylinder. Switch to my side view. And rotate it into place. This is just a placeholder. Doesn't need to be perfect. I want it to fit fairly close. Switch to my front view. Let's get this guy out of the way. At least for now. That looks pretty good. I don't need those faces. So I'm going to delete them. I don't need the back faces either. Delete those. And I'm going to call this lamp place. Okay, once I have the placeholder for my little frog lamp set up, I want to verify that it's in the right position. Looks pretty good in the front view. Looks pretty good in the side view. Zoom in just a little bit see that. So what I want to do next is just give it a little bit more of the kind of shape that I would expect it's going to have once it's completed. So go ahead and grab all these edges. Stretch it out just a little bit. Get it into position. And because it's still a placeholder, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about the geometry of it. Something happened that I accidentally deleted part of it. I am gonna delete the bottom faces though, because I don't need them. Go ahead and get rid of them. And I often navigate right through my object. I'm sure everybody does that, but uh, I do it when I'm working on car models. It's often hard to see through, and that's another reason why you probably want to work in, uh, or why I like to work in ghost shade mode. So that's basically where the headlamp is going to go. But there's a problem. We notice that we need to build a little bit more curvature into this front section of the car. So we're going to need to make a couple cuts to do that. So I'm going to click back on the main body and it's got a little off center. Can move it over slightly. Give myself a little bit more tension on the edge. I want to go all the way towards it. Hmm. I don't want to move the entire line. I really just want to move it in this section right to here, move it over slightly. You might wonder why I'm doing that. It's because as I start to make my cuts, I want there to be enough room I can cut right around the object. So I'm going to go into object mode and then switch to cut. cut from here to here. That didn't give me what I wanted. I wanted this face and then this one. Come across these two faces. 
Make another cut. Let me just move this out of the way for just a second so we can see what's happening. Move it up. And I'm creating a little bit more geometry. Cut that face. Connect them. Connect. I probably want to do a little bit more right in here. Cut this face. And and just a series of cuts. Let me shift this to flat shade so it's a little bit easier to see. And this is going to give me a little bit more control over these faces so I can move them down and create more of an impression into the front of the hood. Now we already see this gives us a couple five-siders right over here, some end gowns which aren't desirable, but that's okay. We can go ahead and just cut those, cut each of them, and then connect. And notice the effect this is having on the edge tension. And we'll just refine that a little bit, but that's the basic way that we'd want to affect that central area. We're already seeing here that we probably just need to create a little bit more geometry. I know I keep saying that, a little bit more geometry, but we want to keep this as even as possible. We don't want polygons of, of varying size. Okay, that's a good start. And next I'll show how to extrude some of these edges and how to borrow some of the geometry to make some of the more complex shapes.